Energy pushed this site 75% of this match. Pearl B. Long has problems, and Energy abused them this entire game. And Loud didn't have that great of an answer, but you can't blame them. This site has a massive hole that a lot of teams are exploiting, and something needs to be done. I mean, the stats don't lie. In this video, you're going to learn about the fundamental flaws of this site, how Energy abused them, and why everybody is going B. The battle for B starts on pistol round. Just by looking at both team compositions, you'll notice that they're both running identical agents. Let's start with Viper. She's a great secondary controller on this map, as the various walls you can do exploit how teams like to play it. This meta attacker wall is great at scaling up B site, but also defaulting into B link. When this wall is up, defenders can no longer hold from these parts of the map, or else they're denied valuable information. These walls apply a ton of pressure that the defense is forced to respect. Now for defenders, this wall is used primarily for retake or holding back the attackers. The only agents that can effectively smoke off the entirety of Vlong are Viper or Harbor, and this wall has a great dual purpose. It allows you to come out of your spawn, isolate hulls, tap the spike, and force attackers to take fights from Long for the retake. While good in theory, this doesn't always work out as you'll see later. Now let's look at Harbor. This map was built for this guy and not because it's underwater. But when paired with Viper, they can take turns sectioning off parts of the map that they're ready to take. So if your team is running it down B, you'll have Viper pop her wall up so that you guys can get close. Then your harbor will tell Viper to put her wall down, he'll put his up, and all three choke points are going to be smoked off. Heaven, Spawn, and Street. By doing this, your team can isolate anyone still trying to hold the site, and from there, you pop your cove and get a safe plant off. And if you remember back to the chamber video I posted, Sky works really well with these two controllers, because when your team sections off a part of the map, you can decide which side you'd like to get information on. Then, with that info, you can adjust accordingly. Lastly, they both have Killjoy. I mean, her ultimate and setups are just too good on this map. And if you take a look at most of these clips that I was just playing for you, they all have one thing in common. They're all centered around B. So, how do you stop this as a defender? Well, this is very hard, and you'll see why. Pistol Round starts with all five energy players geared up and ready to go B. Loud have Sky and Jet fighting for A main, Harbor and Viper fighting for mid, and Killjoy playing B for information. Their plan is to play retake B this round. What most teams like to do is get the spike planted and then go play long so that they can spam any diffusers. It's harder to spam the spike with pistols and you have to get a lot luckier, but FNS is strapped with two snake bites. The round starts with Crashies placing his turret right on ramp, and Sadek shoots it. Energy's protocol for this round is if the turret gets shot, they use a flash to clear close, but it tags nothing. NRG continue to contact up B-Long, but Loud have full information on A-Man. Cowan's in flashed, saw nothing, and Aspas took the space. Rotates are starting to come over, but NRG are already starting their execute. No secrets on the way in. No pressure actually returning here. Sadak will get caught by the Trailblazer, and NRG looking to collapse on that. Yeah, Sadak's in a little bit of trouble. He absolutely is. Good trade from Leslo to keep it. Energy used their harbor utility to isolate the site. The Trailblazer tags Sadak, and he gets taken down. But because Energy didn't drop their Viper wall, Les manages to peek from street and get the trade. It's a four versus four, but Crashies has managed to find a timing push into spawn. Energy has lost long control, which forces FNS to plant for site itself. With this flank coming in from Aspas, the crossfires need to be good from this heaven position if Energy. NRG want to win the pistol. NRG showing to long though. No, they're sitting deep on the side for the wrong timing shown here. Two he's makes light work of FNS. Cause in the swing, crashes, trying to do what he can, but let is certainly more right now as Aspas finally makes his debut. Pushing spawn wasn't the winning play for NRG this round, but just because they lost this battle, it doesn't mean they lost the war. NRG are confident in their B hits. So much so that this round they force stingers and plan on doing the same thing. They're already down a map, and if they lose this force, they're going to put themselves in a good position to go home early. Both teams are showing the same exact setup as last round. The round begins, and energy starts with their turret on ramp again. It gets shot, and they follow the same protocol. Cascade up pop a bird, and get ready to execute. Loud recognizes that this is the same round as last. With the information that no one is A, no one is mid, they rush over to stack towards B. But Sadak remembers what happened last time. He recognizes that energy is forced and doesn't want to get pinched again. Him and Les both give up the site and are ready to retake. This time, Collins and Aspas are flanking. They know that energy have close range weapons. So retaking halls is going to be tough. But by flanking long, they'll be able to pinch the site even if it's contested by a stinger or two. This is looking good if you're a loud fan. To hold down yeah. the fort or pillar. Still no flashback for Victor either. There it is, just about ticking through. So the back of the dog, does he decide to go for it? Yeah, he does. So good flash. A little bit of a dash, but seeing the dog, you now know there's two there. 
Turns the flash just fine. Now the pressure comes in, but Victor only gets one here. That's the benefit of having the double stack there, and Loud now just... Victor does a great job. He shows himself on one set of ramps, flashes, repositions to the other, and he gets his. But this isn't enough. FNS gets Molly out from Generator, and Loud has the read. Halls is extremely hard to clear against close range weapons, so Harbor cuts them off with his high tide. This is disastrous if you're NRG. Pushing through this wall is a death sentence, but they have one more win condition, and that's time. Flooding the site, less great pick towards it. Sadak finding Summer now just crashes. Can he buy the time? Dude, he's so cold with it, too. Didn't even doubt it on the defuse. Energy were a couple stinger shots off from winning this round, but with this force fly failing, they now have to pay the price. On the Rika round, they ended B again. And at this point, Loud know that energy are trying to abuse the site. To counter this, Asbest is here and is ready to fight for this ramp control. But here's the issue. Back before Chamber got nerfed, he was the prime defender to hold down B-Long. He could play in any of these spots, commit the attackers to using a good amount of utility to clear him out, and he might get one and play the retake. But without Chamber, there just isn't a good option anymore to defending this site. Sure, you could have Jet posted up with an op, but there's only so many spots you can play without it being easy to trade her out. Your other option is to commit multiple people here, but then the rest of your map is weak. Week. And it's hard to play crossfires on the site because most of the spots are one and dones. You get yours, you're dead, which isn't ideal. The buy barriers are also heavily favored for the attackers, so you can't really even play in this part of the map. I mean, I could go on and on, but I think you get the point. B is hard to defend. But so far, Loud have done great with their solid retakes, and both rounds we broke down have come down to the wire. This round, they've decided to show them a different look and play this more aggressively. But this is also hard. With this aggression, they hope to force Energy into their Viper, who's dropping her pit on A. Energy are also showing something different. They only have 3B, 1 mid, but Raze is on A. Now, take a look where the spike is positioned. From all this information, we can safely assume that their plan is to show heavy pressure on B again so that they can come back to A and execute with their big ultimates. Energy start the round with a new default. This time, they commit Viper's Orb to smoke the cross on ramp. By having the smoke here, Energy can threaten that they've crossed the space at any given time. This is a nightmare for anyone holding because now you have to respect both sides of ramp or gamble that they haven't crossed. It's risky. With this orb, they sky flash and place down Killjay's turret. But Loud doesn't care. Aspas and Cowensin contact up B-Long and break the turret. Killjay and Sky immediately start to leave after they throw down their utility. We were right. Energy was going A this entire time. But before they rotate, FNS just heard gunshots close. He got flashed, sees a cloudburst, and spots Sky's dog. He knows Loud are aggressing B-Long and he's letting them have it. But he smells something fishy. <laughs> Hey guys, come back to B. Let's re-clear this. FNS recognizes that Loud are trying to push them into A. Artist called out the Viper's Pit. FNS has seen the aggression. It all makes sense now. Energy comes back to B. Sky lets her hound loose, and it catches Aspes up ramp. They punish him hard for pushing too far and run it down B main. Now Cowensin is screwed. He hops back into this cubby and hopes that Energy doesn't clear him. And he dodges the Sky Flash. She hears the cascade, some footsteps, and her harbor comes in for the rotate. He jump spots and tries his best to bait for his Sky, and Energy doesn't clear her. Sam was a few pixels away from spotting Cowens in, and he punishes them. But he gets traded by Artis. Like I said, these spots are one and dones. So with the Killjoy lockdown invested in this round, and Artis hitting another nice shot on the stranded Tui's, Energy win a pivotal round four. Round five is important. Both teams have low credits, and whoever wins this one is going to force the other onto a low buy. This round, Energy are showing the same default as the previous round. They have 3B, 1 mid, 1A. Their plan is the same as last. They want to show heavy B main pressure, then come back to A. But Teets, you said that they were going to spam B site. Why are they going A two rounds in a row? Okay, well, calm down, little Jimmy. There's a reason. A lot of teams on this map will only lean towards A if they have big ultimates online. This includes Harbor's Reckoning and Raze's Showstopper. And last round they had Killjoy's Lockdown, which makes A literally free. Believe it or not, I was going to cover the Cloud9 versus Paper X matchup where Cloud9 just slammed B over and over, but I wanted to cover a different team. And they did the same thing. They would spam B site and would only hit A with their ultimates. This would create the illusion that they weren't just going B, when in reality they were, just not with big ultimates. So their plan is to go A. Loud have just come out of a timeout, and their plan is to heavily fight for mid control and play retake with Killjoy's lockdown. They have three people coming out of art and one from B-Link. The round starts, and Energy pops their smoke in bird and immediately dart back to A. But what they don't know is that Loud have total mid control. Aspas has contacted all the way into window. This could be a big kill. Might actually catch crashes here, Lauren. 
timing is everything. Oh, and it's good. Their caboose is dead, and in response, energy sprints up into A site. They waste no time to pop our results, plant for, and take dugout control. With all A main control lost, energy makes a hard push into spawn, and we see a harbor versus harbor duel. Trying to be committed and somewhat of an overcommitment towards CT, but they have to get some territory. Sadak does have the lockdown here. It's a good invest here. Yeah, he will. It's going to shut off a lot of sight, force them into spawn. So he's going to be feeling the pressure here. Yeah, dealt with Artis with a double as well. This was a perfect reaction from Energy. They're down numbers, have little map control, and so they have to push up and make a play. Off screen, Artis nets two massive kills with a showstopper and put Energy back in the driver's seat this round. But with Aspas and Les still alive, the round is never over. Their own lockdown is about to go off, and Les darts to the spike, smokes it off, and taps it. He knows two of them pushed him to spawn, and he needs these two kills if he wants the round. Couldn't quite get away from it though, Aspas. Still standing. Hold on, well, the tap on the spike, and Les! Oh my word! Beautiful work towards CT and now FNF sweating bullets. Two players to stand up against him, and he crumbles. Energy played the round perfectly, but in the end, they thought somebody was on the spike and their spacing was off. Aspects and Les absolutely saved Loud this round. Energy take a timeout. Bro, they just walked all the way out mid. Yep, no way they do that again. Probably. Energy knows that they just got burned in mid, so this round they want to funnel all of their low buy kits into this one part of the map. They've barely shown mid all game, so this could catch Loud off guard. This also conditions Loud to expect them to go mid in the future and not just ram it up B. FNS calls his team to take mid and eventually split art. He's going to slowly trek up A main and meet up with his team later. And Loud too have come up with a new setup. They have Aspas on B on top of these boxes to try and get one with his operator. Kildra has her bots in both parts of mid. Harbor and Sky are fighting for art and Viper is anchoring A. Their plan is to show heavy amounts of pressure on A so that Energy walks into their op on B. Both teams have new setups. This should be an exciting round. Energy defaults mid similarly to how they did on B. Turret goes out with the Sky Flash. Most rounds, Loud has been defaulting this cascade in mid, but Artis doesn't see anything behind it, so the wall doesn't bother them. They trailblazer into Art, and Loud responds with another cascade. This one stops energy, but they satchel in front of them to break any kill J bots that might slow them down. Yeah, absolutely. Trying something a little different here. The flash and the follow-up. Artis could be taking point on this one, some by the side. Two is though gonna take space. I like what he's doing here as well. Has to win the fight on the other side, which would be against FNS. But he hasn't been challenged on this angle, the plant's gonna come in, but they have really very few safe post-plant positions. They've gotten onto site, and Loud have split up. Viper's gone into dugout, but Harbor pushed up A main. Both reactions are fine, but ideally you'd want to do one together. FNS loses a duel on the solo Harbor, but the rest of energy immediately respond by taking A main control. With full weaponry and good post-plant positions, energy have turned this low buy into a very winnable round. Oh, positions, two is winning out. That's massive. All comes in. NLG want to address this quickly, and they do. Crashes takes him down. The overwhelm is there. NLG holding onto the site for now. Finally, a player up to the good. Sadak still standing, but only for so long. And now Aspas in a 1v3 position, absolutely checked on. What a play coming out of Energy's timeout, and perfect reactions to come along with it. Energy are back to their original game plan, abuse B for free rounds. They start all 5B, wanting to keep all their guns away from Loud, and they're in a 4-1 setup. Since Energy took a small break from hitting B, they don't expect them there this round, and they stack mid. Based off previous rounds, they have a lot of faith in their B retakes. Energy sections off ramp, pops the bird behind the wall to check close, and contact up. Once they scale, they start their execute behind the trailblazer. Oh, it was such a sort off to pick. So much variety being shown here already from the young man. And uh, loud in this round. Obviously working with substantially less. So if you're an NRG fan... All right. Let's kick back and watch loud get massacred by rifles. There is a no chance they retake with classics. Being so panicked and fragile. And already one player in, Sadak, making no secrets of this. Quick to work. Aspas tries to get that first frag, but it's actually less to get it on. Big trade for Ardis. Blinded up. Ha! You guys think I'm worried? Yeah, yeah, energy are down a player. But guys, come on, seriously, it's planted for B long. 
What people don't understand about B-Long is that it's near impossible for defenders to clear out anyone behind pillar or on top ramp. There's just too many angles for them to peek from, and if you use a molly or something, they can use this pillar as cover to back up and keep spamming the spike. Combine all this on top of the fact that you have to defuse, and it's almost impossible. Let's see how loud handle it. 4v3 now, but surely these final three should dig their heels in. Six go down, they didn't find what they wanted. NRG holding those back lines like their life might just depend on it. Aspas desperate to try. They may just be a try at this point, still doing damage. But the bubble got melted and Loud got sprayed down. I mean, this is difficult and they're going to need a solution to this B-long abuse. Energy's comp is built around B-side in mind. Their walls are too good, the site is too flawed, and Energy are abusing it to the max. They have another 5 stack towards B, and Loud are in a 1-3-1 setup. Energy scales up, and they start their execute. The best. Uh, position he's playing is interesting, actually, because last time NLG did try and pinch halls from both sides with this Trailblazer. So they all come in. It's going to make this a little bit more difficult. Already bounding towards the back of the side. It's not pretty, but it's the job. <sighs> This poor, poor Killjoy. What she doesn't know is that holding B-side alone is literally impossible. You could try and stall as long as possible on halls, but with this Harbor High Tide, there's nothing your teammates can do to help you out. This site needs a rework. FNS pops his ultimate, and this site just became 10 times harder to retake. And for you Viper mains out there, this is what a good pit looks like. When you use your ult, you want to make sure that you're clogging up avenues that the defense are going to retake from. This maximizes how much health your enemies will decay for. With this Viper's pit, a lot are going to be on 1 HP by the time they get to the spike. But it's not over yet. Victor gets too antsy, he flashes out in the street, Artis gets blasted through a smoke, and now it's down to a 2 versus 4. Crashies responds by activating his lockdown because he knows how important this round is. If they win, Loud will be forced onto another eco. And FNS goes huge. He kills the Viper who just dropped from heaven, gets Artis through the smoke, and gets a third with his snake bite. Thanks to this well-placed Viper's pit, Energy pull off a knife post plant. <laughs> Get it? Because knife. Coming off of Aniko and another loss on B site, Loud are struggling to find an answer. They start 2B, 2 mid, and 1 on A. With all of their killjoy utility on site, plus a Viper wall, plus sky flashes, they're hoping that this makes it way harder for energy to push through. But that's what Raze is for. Raze is a direct counter to Killjoy, and she won't slow energy down. Actually, energy are sending 3 up B main this time, and 2 through mid. Something a bit different. Their plan is to split B-Site through Link. Now, the thing about B-Splits is that they are hard to pull off without B-Long control. If you try and split without it, the defense can isolate you from the rest of your team and pinch you before the B-Main players even have a chance to help you. But with B-Long, you guys can properly pinch any enemies trying to contest you in B-Link. So Energy starts by showing their normal B-Default, but Viper and Ray's contact up to Dumbledore. They're going to explode out once they're all in position. Or knife in the back, but it depends on the timing. This has to be. I was gonna say, he's gotta be careful of this oh pop with the showstopper. Yeah, and Ardis is away and sends it. Luckily, FNS is by his side. Less with the trade and the swing, but that's answered right back. It's a three versus three, and Sedek activates his lockdown. But it doesn't matter. Energy have plenty of time to plant the spike and get out towards long. Remember what I said? It's impossible to defuse when planted here. Energy scurries back to long, but not before landing a nasty headshot on the Sadek. It's a three versus two, but with Aspas, anything's possible. Coming through from Link. They've just faded away from it here. Ardis tucked on the site. Not gonna get what he wants out of this, and Ardis willing to challenge, willing to brawl out. But Aspas on the back foot now as it's a 1v2. Tap on the spike, needs to draw some fire, which it does. They haven't seen him yet, now they have. Aspas, oh my word, nine bullets to play with. And a dream crashes down to 58. He has to swing, and he's got the fight, crashes. I told you guys, once the spike gets planted for long, it's over. Loud knows there's a problem, but they can't do anything about it. Investing three or more players there might work, but it's a large and risky investment. They keep getting knocked back on Ecos, and they need a win to regain momentum. This round, they stack three towards B and start Jet and Sky towards A. And Energy are still abusing B. I mean, if it isn't broken, don't fix it. Rinse and repeat. Scale up B and get ready to hit. But Loud are flanking really fast. Within the first 15 seconds of the round, Aspas is up A main and in Energy spawn. They don't know it yet, but they're about to get pinched. This duel is big. Come in. Nothing close on sight, there's what? Aspas. 
Energy have just lost all of V-Man control and are screwed. FNS calls out and tells his team to push into the enemy spawn. This is a perfect decision. If they just sit here and hold angles, they run a big risk of getting pinched from four different choke points. Victor, Crashies, and Som all swing through the harbor wall and start going bananas. Normally, you shouldn't push the high tide, but they know they have the better weapons and take advantage of it. Energy have created an opening into this round, and they're running with it. Raid boss Aspas is running behind them, and they don't want this smoke. Crashies and Victor knife out to A, while Artis holds back the beast. They plant, but Aspas takes down Artis. Now, let's pretend for a second to be in Aspas' shoes. How do you even begin clearing out all the potential angles that Crashies and Victor are in? You don't. There's just too many angles to clear, and Energy close out the round. Now, if we turn back the clock to round 5, you'll remember that when Energy has big ultimates, they go A. Now class, what does Energy have this round? Good! So, where are they gonna go? Nice! Look at you! You're learning so fast. Energy are set up in a 1-1-3 default. Kildre's turret and Rays are going to walk up mid, and Sky, Harbor, and Kildre herself are going to take A main. Now in case you were AFK for the first 90% of this video, Loud have been getting beat down on B round after round. So they adjust by putting Aspes here alongside Killjoy, her entire setup, and Viper. Harbor is Art, and Sky is on A main playing for information. Energy start by defaulting down A main with a Cascade paired with the Skyward. Just like on B, they pop it behind the wall to see if anyone's pushed up. The nice thing too is that Harbor's Cascade is pretty tall, so it allows you to pop the bird high up to catch anyone trying to hide from it without giving you false information. Now you won't see it on screen, but Ray sends her Roomba down double door and this turret holding art. With Viper Smoke on B, they're setting up map wide pressure. This is a good default. In response, Loud set up SBS up on B with this operator. For the first time in a long time, B site isn't a problem for Loud, but they're forgetting one thing Killjoy's lockdown is insane. Viper leaves B main, rejoins Rays, and crashes ults. As the ult goes off, Artist launches his paint shells off the wall to prevent anyone leaking out of A connector, and this entire part of the map is NRGs. Loud desperately need a way to get back onto site. So as soon as the lockdown goes off, Les immediately pops his Viper Pit to allow his team an avenue back onto site. FNS kills Sadek, who is trying to lurk through Double Door, but Kowenzen kills Crashies, who try to push into Flower. Sky pops their Seekers, Harbor rips his Reckoning, and Aspes is shift walking through Spawn. Loud slowly start their retake, and they tap the spike. Sam calls it out, but Energy doesn't bite. Somehow they know they aren't sticking. Kowenzen flashes through the smoke, Kills FNS, but Artis gets the trade, but Aspis gets that trade. It's a three versus two, and things are getting hairy. Two now, Victor and Som. What are you gonna do with it? Les is standing and delivering, and the diffusion ain't stopping Victor. Oh my word! He denies it, goes back in. It's just frenzies as best he can. Diffuse will be there. Despite investing a lot of ultimates, Energy couldn't win on A, but it was close. And after hitting B 75% of the time this half, Energy closed it out on top despite losing pistol round 7-5. to five. Let me know in the comments if you want part 2 to this overtime thriller.